Hello. It is my pleasure today to introduce Diana Sutherland, one of our advanced nurse practitioners at UC Health at the Barrett Cancer Center. Diana is actually my nurse practitioner, and so we work side by side. She and Sadie Supplinger from the Department of Surgery coordinate and direct our high-risk program. And we are so pleased today to have as our next mini talk information about prevention of breast disease amidst the pandemic. Diana. Thank you, Dr. Lauer. It's, very, it's a pleasure to be here. So we thought it would be helpful to talk to patients about prevention and screening and things you can do to keep yourself healthy throughout the pandemic with regards to breast cancer and regards to general health. Um, so we know that COVID-19 has posed an unprecedented challenge to our patients, to us as clinicians, and to health systems in general. It has had an effect on almost every aspect of our daily lives, from screening, to diagnosis, to cancer treatment, and to follow up for our patients, as well as for, for my high-risk patients, it's had uh, an impact on their management as well. Uh, what we saw back in March when uh, COVID-19 was declared a pandemic well, and the CDC and other healthcare organizations uh, advised that we delay um, preventative health and screenings for cancer and other things in general because the, the risks outweighed the benefits at that point. Um, what we started to see nationally was that cancer screenings in general just got sidelined and shut down. And for breast cancer, we saw probably an 85 to 90% uh, decrease in breast cancer screenings. That's a huge number. They just weren't being done. Uh, and we saw that across all cancers. Um, we saw that uh, the majority of people canceling their appointments were women and women who were like 45 to 60, so who were getting those screenings. Um, in addition to that, we saw that cancer diagnoses uh, went down and breast cancer diagnoses took the biggest hit. Uh, we noticed a decline of about 52% in breast cancer diagnoses. Now that's not to say that there is less cancer out there. That is to say that we are diagnosing cancer less because we're screening less. And I think that the downstream effects of that will are remain to be seen within the next year or so as we finish out 2020 and look at our numbers. Here at UC Health, we saw very similar findings to what we saw nationally from January to July of this year. We noticed that we did 3,000 less screening mammograms and that will make an impact on our numbers for 2020. And again, I think we'll see the downstream effects of that probably in 2021. Our high risk screenings also uh, were put on hold and our high risk appointments were put on hold because they were, they were deemed you know, uh, unnecessary or not urgent. So those got put on hold during March and April. I think the important message that I wanted to point out with all of this is that while COVID-19 certainly poses a serious threat to our society, cancer also um, poses a serious threat. And cancer didn't stop during the pandemic. It continued and it will continue. And I think, as I said, we will see the downstream effects of that in the upcoming year. The other message that I wanted to make sure that our patients get is it is safe to come in and get your mammogram. Here at UC Health, we are currently back up and screening. We are taking all the appropriate and advised precautions from pre-screening the day ahead of appointment to temperature checks at the door, mandatory masking, hand washing, special cleaning of equipment between patients and spreading appointments out um, to keep less patients in the waiting room. So we've made it as safe as we can and we want you to know that it is safe to come in and get your mammogram. Um, because some of the population that I care for don't have breast cancer but are at higher risk for breast cancer, I thought it might be helpful to point out some of the things that make people uh, at higher risk. 
So things like a personal history of breast cancer, maybe you've had a biopsy that showed some atypical cells, going through menopause older than 55 or starting your periods before the age of 12. Postmenopausal obesity certainly has an effect on uh, breast cancer risk, as does the use of alcohol and the use of postmenopausal hormone therapy. There are some hereditary factors, such as having multiple family members with breast cancer, especially before the age of 50. Um, any family member with a history of male breast cancer certainly increases your risk. First degree relatives with ovarian cancer. And the Ashkenazi Jewish population does have a higher risk based on the fact that we know that they tend to mutate some of those high-risk genes more frequently than the general population, such as the BRCA1 and the BRCA2 genes. Um, I, I think it's important to point out, though, to that the majority of breast cancer is random. It, it's not caused by a genetic mutation. It's just random. Uh, so I take care of both breast cancer patients and patients who are high risk. I think it's helpful to talk about how we manage average risk versus high risk and how we were able to do this during the pandemic. For average risk patients, our, our mammogram is our gold standard. It remains our gold standard as it does for high risk patients. We want everybody to have an annual mammogram. Um, for high risk patients, and, and what makes you high risk based on some of those elements that I discussed a moment ago gives you a score. And when your score reaches 20% or greater, you are deemed higher risk for developing breast cancer in your lifetime. As you can imagine, that can cause some anxiety for a lot of people. And then when you take away their uh, additional screening for a period of time, that can also cause some anxiety. For these people, we, some of them, we screen more frequently. Every six months, we alternate a mammogram with an MRI. Those two uh, images give us very different images of the breast, but very helpful images of the breast, and they're spaced six months apart. And then, depending on what the other elements of risk are for a certain individual, we add in some genetics assessment and maybe send them for genetic testing. Often that is covered by insurance, depending on your family history. Um, if it is not covered by insurance, the genetics counselors will speak with you. It has become much more affordable recently in the past couple of years for people to be able to um, get that genetic testing if their insurance will not cover it. For certain individuals, there are prophylactic surgeries that may reduce their risk by up to about 90%. And then we have large studies that have shown that there are medications that can reduce risk by 50%. So for individuals who are higher risk, we do have options. Um, and then there's lifestyle and breast awareness, which I'm gonna talk about in a moment. But during the pandemic, when our patients were not able to come in for the first six weeks or so, we were not doing appointments, but then we started having phone uh, follow-ups with our patients to make sure they weren't having any breast issues so that if they were having breast issues, we could bring them in to examine them and get them uh, evaluated. Um, additionally, we started doing our risk assessments by phone for our new patients, and we were able to identify things that might be helpful and get them started on the path for their management, such as genetic testing. Um, and sent them for genetic testing. And then when it was safe to come in, we had them come in for their evaluation and started their screening. So we were able to adapt throughout the pandemic and manage them safely. Just took a little bit of time to get there. Mm -hmm. um, part of my talk, a lot of my talk is about prevention. And there are things that can prevent breast cancer. We have a lot of research that talks about prevention for breast cancer. And these are things that can seem very simple when you say them out loud, but a lot of people struggle with some of these things. One of the biggest things is exercise. And when I say that to people some days, their eyes light up and get big. Um, and sometimes they'll say to me, how am I gonna find time to exercise in my day? What, what our guidelines are are 30 minutes a day for five days a week, um, and exercise, the most beneficial exercise I think you can do is go out and take a nice walk 
Right now, that's great. That will become challenging as the winter months and the darkness comes upon us. But um, a, a nice walk where you're a little bit breathless but can still speak comfortably is moderate exercise. Now, I myself have found some ways to modify this during the pandemic. Um, and I think for people, what I tell them is it has to be realistic for you. It has to work into your day. So if it has to be two 15 minute sessions, that still works. And maybe you don't start off with 30 minutes, maybe you start off with 10. And you do 10 this week and then next week you do 15 and 20. Um, if you take a walk around the block, again, now it's nice and it's light outside, but soon it will be dark and cold and slippery and we won't want to do that. There are lots of virtual options that have become available during the pandemic. And um, you can do virtual Pilates, you can do virtual 10 minute cardio bursts, um, virtual yoga, all kinds of things. If you, there's multiple apps on phones uh, that can help you search virtual classes in your area. Many of them are free, some of them are at a lower cost, but that is a way that you can kind of find to work exercise into your day and make it a little more realistic for you. And make it work for you. It has to be something you want to do. It, it, it shouldn't be a job um, or you won't want to do it. Um, another thing is avoiding alcohol and alcohol, has, is, uh, alcohol consumption has been shown to have a direct effect on breast cancer. Uh, in the breast cancer world, we tend to say less is better. Our guidelines still say that one drink a day or seven drinks a week for women is acceptable. I think we are more of the mindset that again, less is better and we are of maybe the one to three drinks a week for women. Um, but just um, a, a route across your lifetime, uh, avoiding alcohol consumption. Weight control is very important. And I know during the pandemic, a lot of people ate and put on weight. Um, it's very important for, for everything, not just for breast cancer prevention, but for heart disease and diabetes and just your overall well being. Maintaining a healthy weight throughout your lifetime is very important. And for breast cancer, it's very important, um, especially as we age into menopause, because the majority of women diagnosed with breast cancer are menopausal, and we all have that few extra pounds of weight, and that extra weight has the ability to provide some estrogen that might drive a breast cancer. Um, and I think healthy diet is another one. We do not recommend a specific diet other than that healthy plate diet. And I think that's become challenging for a lot of people during the pandemic. They've gone to comfort foods and processed foods and quick foods. Uh, I think as things are settling down, maybe we're becoming a little bit more thoughtful about what we eat. I've tried to be. Um, and having more fruits and vegetables be the 50% the of our plate and the healthy proteins and healthy carbs be the other 50% of your, your plate. Um, smoking, just not good for anything. Mm -hmm. And then I add two in here because I think Dr. Lauer and I hear about these two things every single day, probably from 95% of our patients, and that is that they are all stressed and that they can't sleep. Um, because of everything that's going on. And those two factors will uh, impact your immune system by a great deal. So managing your stress and sleeping, getting good amount of sleep will help your overall health in general. And I'm gonna come back to my exercise because how you can manage stress and how you can sleep better is maybe take a nice walk or do a little bit of exercise. It's great stress relief. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch upon was uh, breast awareness because this is so controversial out in, in the general population. There are so many people that say self-breast self examination is not helpful. People find too many lumps and then it leads to too many uh, diagnostics. But we are of the mindset here within my group um, that yes, 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 you need to practice breast awareness. It is very important to know what your breasts look like and what your breasts feel like. The most important thing I can tell you from this is that breast, breast cancer does not always show up as a lump. 
Um, it's not always that noticeable. Sometimes it's a change in the skin over your breast. It could be a rippling or a dimpling, a thickening in one area of your skin. It could show up as a rash or a funny looking mole or nodule on your chest. It could be a focal pain in one breast that you don't have in the other breast that just won't go away. Could show up as nipple changes. Maybe your nipple is pulled in or pulled off to the side or that you have nipple discharge, especially from one side and not the other. So I think it's just important to know, and especially if you're a woman who's still having menstrual cycles, that you know what your breasts look like before your cycle, during your cycle, and after your cycle, because they change. So establish that baseline and get to know them so that those subtle changes will prompt you to think about coming in for an exam. And the last thing, I just wanted to put in a plug for our uh, risk assessment program, our RAMP clinic, we call it, Risk Assessment and Management. If you think that you or a friend or a family member could be at higher risk for breast cancer, but you're not sure, please feel free to call us and schedule an appointment. We'll bring you in, we'll do a full risk assessment for you and then guide you in, for your management. We do, uh, if you're worried about coming in in person, uh, we do offer phone appointments. We can do that risk assessment by phone, and, uh, and then we can guide you along the path from there. There is a number that we can flash up, I think, at the end, but our number is 584-RISK. Um, and we thank you for choosing UC Health and UC Breast Center. Thank you so much, Diana. That was yeah. such a uh, great review. Uh, it's so hard to remain healthy during the pandemic time, and I know you and I have talked on multiple occasions about those challenges. You went over so many of those key points that our patients ask us pretty much on a daily basis. One that didn't strike out so much was loneliness, and you know COVID-19 has created so much isolation, uh, particularly for those who live alone or those who are at an advanced age and may perhaps be in a care facility. Do you want to comment at all about resources or, or tips that can help with that as well? Sure, absolutely. We, we do get that a lot. Mm -hmm. People are very lonely. Um, I think that uh, a lot of people still aren't even seeing their family mm -hmm. and they miss their family. And I think it's so important during this time to be able to spend some time with family, whether it be virtually, FaceTime, uh, some distanced outside time or distance indoor time, but to really be able to still connect with family during this time is very important. For those people who don't have family, maybe there are some community resources. We have a social worker here who has some resources available. Um, there are some resources available through, I think, Cancer Family Care, and they do some virtual things. Um, for patients so that if you're afraid to leave the house, you can still connect with other people. I think as we evolve into the pandemic, we're finding more virtual things to be able to connect people. I think one of the things that you and I hear a lot is that when people come to their appointment, they're excited because they're having <laughs> human contact. <laughs> so that's it's very important, I think, yeah. to c still connect with family and still connect with friends, but do so safely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So I thank you so much. I have just a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. Have you had any uh, silver lining that you, uh, what we might call it? Anything positive that you can see personally, professionally that's happened because of the pandemic? So I think both personally and professionally, I've grown during this pandemic. In the beginning, it was difficult for me, I think a little bit, um, uh, somewhat, I, um, but parts of my life never changed. I still come to work every day and that's different than most people. So for me, being able to still come in and do my job every day has been very important. I think it's helped guide me through this pandemic. It's helped me um, grow as a person and grow as a provider. I think listening to my patients every day and being able to give something back to them has given something to me. I think personally, I have been able to somehow manage myself into a healthier lifestyle by using some of those virtual programs. 
I've uh, started preparing healthier meals and trying to eat healthier. And in the past month, I've noticed that I've kind of gotten myself on track. So I think that's been my silver lining. In addition to staying connected with my family, um, which is very important to me. So our final question, if you had that crystal ball, how long do you think this pandemic will last? Wow. <laughs> I wish I could say only another couple of weeks, but I have a feeling we're in for at least the remainder of this year and into 2021 yeah. before we get things yeah. controlled and calmed down. Well, thank you again. Uh, we appreciate everything you do for our high-risk patients and our breast cancer patients and all the information you gave us today. If you've enjoyed today's video, please feel free to pass it on to post it using your social media to your friends and family members. Next week, we have another special treat because Andy Meyer, who's our nurse navigator for the UC Health uh, breast cancer team, will be talking about navigating the 2020 uh, COVID um, pandemic. And please stay tuned next week as you'll hear more. Thanks again for listening.